Welcome, this is Raggy Horner. And our topic for today is setting up trend reversals using chart patterns, the MACD traditional, and my 34 EMA wave. Now, when you consider what trend following is, the, the, the idea behind it is identifying the trend and expecting continuation. So understanding the difference between a continuation and a correction and a correction and a reversal completely changes the type of strategy that you're going to employ when you see that type of price action. So let's take a look here at the chart of the dollar yen on the four hour. Now you know I like using the live chart so this is the way the chart looks right now. You're going to get a, a, a good preview of what's happening as of today May 26th. And the overall trend, as you can see, now what are the criteria for our identifying a trend, by the way? Market memory first, right? I'm within the market memory for a four hour chart, which is four to six weeks. I'm closer to eight weeks here. I think if I were to stretch this out a little bit, that's about one month there. Okay, so that's four weeks right there. So what we want to do is assess what the direction of this four hour chart is. Now, I don't necessarily need this MACD traditional down here quite yet, but keep it in mind we will use it when we start to confirm trend reversals. So I'm just going to get rid of it for now. So about four to six weeks is what we want to keep here. And I could even blow this chart up. So keeping in mind we have our look back in place, what would you say the direction of this wave is? So when we are judging the wave, there's a few criteria that we use. When speaking specifically about wave clarity, wave clarity begins with, and this doesn't necessarily need to be in any order, but you're assessing each one individually, Wave clarity begins with understanding if the wave is smooth. In other words, are the three lines of the wave traveling smoothly like they are right here? See, so this, this is fairly smooth. Compare that to this area up here where the wave is not as smooth. Do you see the difference? So when you're looking at the smoothness of the wave, affect the angle. I mean, obviously lower lows will pull the wave down, higher highs will start to pull the wave up. But when you get volatility, you get lumpy, bumpy kind of wave. When price action is more organized, you get much more of a smooth wave. So that's one factor. In a trending market, another factor is, do prices respect the support or resistance of the wave? Now in a downtrending four to six o'clock wave, it's the resistance. So how prices respected the resistance of the wave in this area. I believe they have so far, so there is a certain amount of respect. Is the wave in the direction established? In other words, the current angle, has it been moving in this way for some time? Well, this is a four hour chart and you can see here that we have been moving lower at that four to six o'clock angle for some time now. Take a look at the calendar access down here and you'll see even amongst the ugly price action back here when we started to smooth out that was probably about the middle of May. So we've been in this downtrend for the latter half of the month. So it's somewhat established, even for a long-term intraday time frame. So the wave criteria, in terms of clarity, we've assessed. As long as prices are moving down, creating that four to six o'clock angle, and as long as prices are trading below the top line of the wave here, I will continue to expect continuation. I will expect that what is currently in motion will stay in motion, kind of physics 101 to trading, if you will. So until something changes, now what is that something? Well, either the wave flattens out to a more sideways market cycle or prices break the top line of the wave. Either one of those criteria would render new entries expecting follow through lower invalid. In other words, if I get those two situations, 
one, prices start to flatten out the wave, or two, prices break the top line of the wave, either one of those criteria would then invalidate my entering new swing short trades because there's no longer a markdown cycle. So how do you take advantage of that? Well, one way we take advantage of that is once prices flatten out, we'll, be, we'll assess the wave angle once again and determine if it's either trading in a flat 3 o'clock angle, in which case we'll look for momentum breakouts and breakdowns, or if it's trading at what we call a 2 to 4 o'clock angle, where we would have our inside the range or fades, where we would short ceilings and buy floors. But sometimes we don't get that transition to a sideways market when a trend transitions. Sometimes it goes from trend to trend. We've seen that. We've seen where, I'm sure you've seen where prices were heading down, and they literally made an about face, kind of a rounded top, and went right down lower. Or they were going down, and they would, did a 180 and started heading right back up. Without making that transition to a sideways market for very long. Now we will have a brief sideways market when that happens, and we'll get a very short amount of time within a 2 to 4 o'clock clock angle. So that's what we're talking about here today, setting up these trend reversals. How do you set up the trade where the trend is no longer valid, but is not transitioning into a more established 3 o'clock angle or 2 to 4 o'clock angle, giving us an opportunity to either momentum trade or play a distribution fade? What do you do then? That is what I call a wave reversal. So we've set the scene now. We understand why we need this particular this particular entry. So let's go ahead and start to set up what you will need in order to trade this entry and what you'll have to identify. 